I don't know if you guys have seen this video or not. I know it's been kind of circulating through some of the some of the bigger lefty channels here. Uh, it is it is fantastic. Uh, I think this might be one of my new favorite fucking polit- take, takedown of politicians. And and I like once you watch the video, it's just like Abby Martin doesn't actually like take down Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi just takes herself down. That's kind of how this thing runs. Um, Abby Martin asks a fantastic question that deserves an answer. Uh, She does uh, a job of a fucking journalist, which uh, a a journalist, uh, for for those of you watching in America, uh, because this is a not a lot of people know what this job actually is, um, is is uh, not somebody uh, that uh, gobbles the balls of politicians. So, so think of like the opposite of that, uh, and that's what a journalist is. They, a journalist is not supposed to be a politician's friend. They are supposed to hold their feet to the fire and make them answer questions uh, as, as the one that uh, we're going to watch Abby Martin <laughs> ask Nancy Pelosi. And, you know, if they don't get a satisfactory answer, they're supposed to push back uh, either through commentary or through follow-up questions and so on and so forth. But you'll see what happens at the end of the video as to as to why Abby doesn't get the opportunity to do that. So without any further ado, I, I think we should we should start watching this um, this clip here. And it's rather hilarious, I think. So there we go. All right. I'm going to do... Let me see if this is going to Oh no, okay, cool. I'm I'm still above the thing. Cool. And you guys get to see the video a little bit more. That's pretty exciting. Um and uh awesome. And and if we're not hearing anything, leave some comments. It, uh, I'm I'm going to hit play on this thing now. And if and I'll, you know, you know the you know the dip, I'll I'll pause and do my little commentary thing uh and then we'll jump back into the video. But uh, here we go. Okay, so this is this is a COP26, which is you know over at Glasgow and everything. It was a big climate change convention that they had. Uh, it, it's it's like Comic Con, but for people that pretend to give a shit about climate change, uh, that's what COP26 was. Okay, uh, here we go. A woman, a woman, a woman, a woman, a <laughs> woman. Gender equality. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I don't. Let's see. So, but to see, but within the first fucking ten seconds, it's absolutely absurd, right? It's fucking ridiculous because she she calls for a woman. I want a woman. I want a woman, and then she just goes gender equality. <laughs> yeah. Okay, man. Uh, that's that's cool. If there was ever a moment in in time that really captured uh, how much of the Democratic Party. And their identity politics is total bullshit, and uh, and and it's just them kind of playing platitudes. There, it's this moment right here, right? Because then at the end of it, whenever it like didn't happen fast enough, because what what Pelosi expects and what the Democrats have come to expect is whenever they start playing the identity politics card. Um, and and look, I'm not. I, I have my issues with identity politics. I'm not like boo identity politics or anything. Like whenever I do see uh, minority representation in in any form of media, whether it be pop culture media, whether it be but uh, pop politics media or what have you, it is exciting to see that for sure. But they're playing. They're they're not sincere about it. Um, these people are doing it to to get pats on the back and little applauds and all that kind of shit, right? That's that's why that's why they they're doing it. And if there was ever a moment that proves that fucking thing, it's this moment right here, right? This moment right before Abby Martin comes up. Um, and I'm not sure if Nancy Pelosi, you know, because she goes, uh, maybe I don't want a woman, right? I'm not sure if she recognized who Abby Martin was. Uh, I doubt it. I doubt that Nancy Pelosi is aware of the existence of the Empire Files um, and uh, and Abby Martin uh, or real journalists, for that matter. Like it might have it might have thrown her off completely um, that they were letting women be journalists like real journalists and not just, uh, you know, pretty dolled up figures on corporate media that uh, say nice things sometimes or or are Tommy Laren. That could have that itself could have been a huge shock to Nancy Pelosi. She's never heard of such things. A, a lady news reporter, what you know? It's like, 
Like maybe she was just saying, oh, I want a woman. I want a woman as as like it's time for women journalists. And then when Abby Martin showed up, she was like, maybe I don't. Maybe I'm not sure if this is actually what I want, uh, because, you know, uh, Nancy has a pr uh, problem with pr uh, progress, mostly, uh, I think, because uh, she is part of a party that doesn't give a fuck about progress. Uh, they do like to say the word progress, though, quite a bit. Uh, so let's let's. Um, Let's let's check out uh, Abby Martin's question. Abby Martin with the Empire Files. Woo! Speaker Pelosi, you just presided over a, a large increase in the Pentagon budget. This Pentagon budget is already massive. The Pentagon is a larger polluter than 140 countries combined. How can we seriously talk about net zero if there is this bipartisan consensus to constantly expand this large contributor to climate change, which is exempt from these conferences military is exempt from climate talks boom abby martin coming in hot coming in hot with those questions uh so and that's a very reasonable question right uh i don't think abby uh, was being rude in that or or scathing like that's corporate media likes to do that whenever like independent media kind of asks these sort of questions uh, because independent media. I mean, we have every goddamn right to be angry. Uh, we get suppressed nonstop. We get called names. We get we, we constantly have to defend our right to be uh, on the Internet and say the things that we have to say and, and have researched and, and all that stuff. Right. So, yeah, if, if, if we get a little angry about it. We have every right to get a little angry about it because we've been treated like shit. But Abby asks a very reasonable question uh, in, in this clip. Uh, why is the military exempt from climate talks, right? Uh, be, being that the Pentagon is one of the largest polluters of, uh, on, on planet Earth, being that war is uh, the largest polluter on planet Earth and and uh, it, it, it's just awful all around, is why are they exempt from these talks? Why don't military have to show up to be like, hey, this is the damage that you're doing, uh, and maybe and maybe it's time for you to you fucking stop and I don't know, go away forever. Uh, what about that plan as a as a climate solution? Go military, fucking go away for the rest of eternity. <laughs> but that's a that's an excellent question, right? Why is the military exempt from these climate talks? Is it because including them in the climate talks shows the true effects of what the what the war industry does to the planet, right? It, I mean, think about it. it you, you have jets in the air that are constantly flying. You have explosions that are destabilizing, uh, destabilizing, you, you know, rock structures and ground structures. You have you have piles and piles of garbage that they have to light on fire. They, you have piles and piles of human excrement that they have to light on fire. They're, they're soldiers that are sick from this process. they are soldiers that are sick from the way that the military decides that they're going to take care of their waste. And that's not even counting the amount of, of, uh, of pollution that, that, that the war generally creates, right? These machines are not run on, on fucking the same fuel that the, the, <laughs> the DeLorean from Back to the Future 2 is being run on. On. They're not being run on that sort of stuff. Uh, they're being run on on the thing that they're fighting the wars for, right? So it's sort of, again, the snake that's kind of eating itself is war runs on oil. It runs on fossil fuel. And what are most of these wars about? Fucking oil and fossil fuels. It's about the control of oil and fossil fuels so that we can we can have this fuel and make money off of it. That's That's really all it's about. Um, and that's part of the reason why we're in, in Latin America as well is because they most of most of the countries in Latin America have figured out how to nationalize their oil um, and and turn a profit from it and take that profit and help people. Uh, so that's why we don't like Latin America. Right. But this thing that they we're going to war over is the thing that fuels the machine that we need to go to war in order to get the thing. So it's just it's just this fucking insane cycle that doesn't make any logical sense that's the truth is is that why they're exempt from the climate talks because all of this stuff will will come out and we'll start talking about it or is it because that on 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 every level war is really about the extinction of our species and the planet right because climate change is that climate change can can lead to the extinction of of the species and the planet 
for sure, right? Like we are causing our own destruction. But then you you throw war on top of it, where we take these crazy, intense, mach- you know, um, uh, machines that can kill a, a, a whole slew of people, and then we fight each other with them, and a, a bunch of people fucking die. Like a million Iraqis are dead, probably way more. How many Americans died in that fight? How many Americans died in Syria? How many Syrians died in Syria? How many Iranians have already been killed in the conflict? How many Yemenis have been killed in the conflict? You know, how many people are we killing globally around the world because of this fucking war machine that needs to constantly be fed? So not only is it contributing to climate change, which is going to cause our extinction, if we don't do anything about it right fucking now, we're also just physically killing ourselves, <laughs> killing each other, which is also going to lead to our own extinction. So on every level, there's absolutely no positives that you can claim will come out of war other than this vague notion of freedom, which we don't really get uh, for, for a, 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 a bajillion different reasons, right? Or they accept uh, exempt because you'd have to admit the type of pollution that the military industrial complex causes, right? Or is it because, you know, they'd have to fucking admit <laughs> we have, um, that all of this shit, all the COP26 was really for show. It wasn't really for anything except just a performative piece. That's that's really what it boils down to, right? Is they'll have to come out and say, well, we don't actually have any sort of plan or any sort of idea of stopping the military industrial complex. We have no real plan to put an end to climate change at all. We're going to keep keep funneling more money into the fossil fuel industry and keep funneling more money into the war industry so we can co-opt other people's natural resources for ourselves. That's the truth about it. That's what they're afraid is going to come out if they answer a question like that. So here's how they answer the question. Well, I, I just want to use an example, if I can. Um, you know the sea level rise is an important part of uh, you know what's happening to the climate. And I am not a defense person, but I've had so many talks with the Defense Department, with the Navy in particular, about how they have to respond to what's going on. So I really do think that there is no reason why what we're putting together, you know, uh, with Build Back Better and other things, can't yeah. respond to the Defense Department and 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 have the same impact in terms of reducing emissions. And I do think that the Defense Department is very much aware of the fact that they have to play a major role, both from a strategic as well as you know for the good of the world. So I don't see what we're doing in any way or you know increasing the defense budget as being something that's inconsistent with climate action. I really don't. And that- so, I mean, that's masterful deflection of, of actually answering the fucking question, uh, which is what plans do you have to stop climate change via the military industrial complex? And why do you keep mo- giving money to the Pentagon and the defense? Like, why is the defense budget always going up when they're one of the largest fucking polluters on the planet? And if you're really serious about climate change, why isn't that number going down in order to give them more, you know, ways to be renewable ways to fucking not kill the planet. Uh, and he starts talking about sea levels rising, which is like, well, that has nothing to do with what was asked. It's just, well, this is a thing that was said once. I'm going to bring that up because I actually don't know how to answer this question without losing billions of dollars from Raytheon or General Dynamics or Boeing or any of these fucking war profiteers that have paid for for these people to be in office still. And then he talks about reducing emissions and it just makes me go back to think like to Elizabeth Warren's plan uh, because she's the only candidate that's even remotely addressed this and even her response was just like, well, this is fucking weird. Uh, Because her response was that we should be we should com- like there should be more composting that happens in war and it's like well based on what like are you talking about composting our enemies is that what you want to do you want to compost our enemies in, in this situation like is that what this dude's bringing up like oh we're gonna reduce emissions how we're gonna be composting composting what it doesn't matter it's like oh 
is this a soylent green or people moment in human history right now is that we're gonna we're gonna be like oh yeah there, sure there was a million iraqis dead but look at all these fucking trees <laughs> it's not an answer it's it's like what are you talking about Seriously, I'm not making that up. Like you can, you can go to see Elizabeth Warren wants to. It's, it's it just really sounds like she wants to compost the shit out of our enemies. That's what she wants to do. Uh, but I mean, that's a non-answer. It's 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 a response that didn't really answer the question, but it hit some of the terms right. And and here's he, this Nancy Pelosi is about to do the exact same fucking thing, but uh, much better than he did, I think. If I just add that. Um... National security advisors all tell us that the climate crisis is a national security matter. Uh, it is, of course, a health matter for our children, the water they drink, the air they breathe, etc. It is a jobs issue between clean, good, clean technologies uh, being the future of our workforce and the training for all of that. It is a national security issue because of the uh, uh, all of the con conditions that climate crisis produces, I won't go into all of them, but they do ca are cause for migration, conflict over habitat and resources, and again, uh, a security challenge globally. And then the fourth, of course, the moral issue that we need to pass on this planet to future generations in a responsible way. Now, recognizing what you said, we recognize that as well. And a big user of, of uh, fuel, uh, there have been many initiatives over time more successful with more technology to convert from fossil fuel uh, to other other sources of, uh, of fuel of to run the military. We're going to compost our enemies. Difference. Transportation, defense, these are two of the biggest, uh, it can make the biggest difference in all of that. And that is something we're very, very focused on, as I say, the Defense Department sees this systemically, that we have to stop it as a national security issue. And one way to do that is to stop our dependence on fossil fuels, which exacerbate the climate crisis. But I, I got a point. It really felt like whenever she was giving this speech, it just it felt like the same energy that like a fucking high school kid giving a book report to a book they've never read. It's just that's the energy that I that that she was giving that answer because she didn't really say a lot. I mean, she gave the same kind of levels of platitudes that you always hear when when somebody brings up a, a question about renewable energy sources. Right. Like, why aren't we investing more in solar? And they're like, oh, we got to, man. We got to. That's the that's the key. You get, you know, the sun. You get it. You get it because the sun, it's there, you, you know, and uh, and the solar flares that. Those those are things, you know. There was a episode of Star Trek. We're looking into that. Uh, we're we're trying to we're trying to get a hold of Gene Roddenberry to help us out. Seems like he he kind of had like she kind of gave that kind of an answer. And and she like she was like yeah the, they know that it's a national security issue, uh, but we're 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 causing the national security issue. So let's not do a lot about it. Because I feel like the solution is to just kind of like end the Pentagon, you know, and we don't want to fucking, um, because that's the economy. I mean, America's economy runs on, um, you know, fucking war. It's just, but that's, it's just, it's just like fuel, uh, fuel is a thing that, uh, that we use in war for war, uh, and transportation that, which is the idea that, uh, you know, you move, you, you, you move one kind of goods or services, or services uh, to like a different look, a bit different goods or, or services, because that takes, that's fuel. And we do that with the military and the transportation. And then what we, what happens with the, it goes into the air because that's because we, and then because of the fires that happen inside of a, uh, an inch, it's like in compartment. And then when it goes into the, uh, the, go, in the atmosphere, and then it and then it sit and then it becomes rain uh, is what happened because the, because it it's in the atmosphere and and rain comes uh, because of that and then that happens uh, and that needs to happen it's a part of uh, the circle of life uh, and uh, and that's it that's the answer 
and everybody knows like i'm pretty sure every fucking journalist sitting in that uh in that in that room is just like oh well that was that well i feel like nobody answered uh, a goddamn thing in the in the three minutes that we've spent fucking listening to you guys it's just a master class in how to fucking bullshit you know, like you took you, you like I, did they all take a free writing class in college? That's what they that's because that's what their answers sound like. There's no plan in there. There's no plan on what the Pentagon's. This is yeah, they well, and then they address it right. They're like, oh well, it's a national security issue. It's a health issue. It's a work issue. Well, if you know that it's a health issue, then why aren't you helping the people of Flint? And Pittsburgh and Toledo and all these cities that have lead in their water. I don't have drinkable fucking water. And not everybody can afford a Brita filter. Not everybody can afford the little thing that goes in the tap. You know, why haven't you done anything about that? That's a, cl that's a climate change issue. People are losing homes because of, you know, record number of hurricanes, storms. You don't want to do anything about that? That's a climate change issue, too. Oh, it's a jobs issue. Oh, yeah. Well, how come we haven't talked about the incentives for green jobs, the incentives for for renewable sources of energy to be uh, invested into, right? Divesting from fossil fuels and investing in solar or wind or batteries, right? That's a big thing. Oh, where did the sun go at night? Oh, man. So, yeah, you have batteries. You have a better, more efficient grid. You know, that's if if you know all that information, why haven't you done anything about it? Because they know the talking points, and the talking points are the only things. But the talking points are all platitudes when it comes down to actually writing legislation and taking action behind it, listening to what climate activists have to say. It's it's all in through one year out through the other. They ain't saying shit. They're not doing shit. They're saying a lot of shit. They ain't doing shit. Here's a grand conclusion of, of the, this fantastic three-minute video here. Dad, I thank you all for being here. Unfortunately, they're telling us they have to clean the room. I didn't know they about that. They have to clean the room. They have to clean the I mean, immediately after the fucking question is asked, uh, you know, it's, it's well, they got to clean the room. I didn't know they were going to make us clean their, I didn't, well, we asked this question about uh, essentially our pimps, the, mil the the Pentagon and the military, who we have to keep increasing the budget for because uh, because it's the pimp, uh, Pentagon, pimp, P, P, you get it, you guys get it. But just after the conference is over, I'm sure she went back and be like, who the fuck let an actual journalist in here? Who actually fuck? That was a that was a legitimate question that she, that I fucking wh who did that? Was it Jerry? Where's Jerry? Jerry's fired. Kill Jerry. That's what happens when you get fired by Nancy Pelosi. Boom. That's what happens. You don't fuck with the P dog. Right? And then she high fives people as somebody hands her shampoo. This is what I imagine uh, happens in the uh, uh, the back room of uh, of this conference. But look, I. I mean, how much more proof do we really need that these climate conferences are nothing? They're they're just they're just staged performances uh, for these uh, for these fucking elites to get together every couple of years and say, "Look, we're doing something about it." The solar, you know, that we, we, somebody mentioned it, and I was like, "That's the sun." I know that one. That's the big big fireball in the sky. And then when it goes night night, it becomes the night. That's why it's called night night. That's all they do. They just fucking say a bunch of shit, and everybody goes yes. But this time, not a lot of people went. Oh yeah, you guys are. Thank you for saying the things that we've been thinking about in our brain houses. Like fucking nobody's saying that shit. Everybody's like, yeah, but you guys said this at the Paris Climate Accords, and then you guys didn't do anything about it. And you have fucking Mr. Fossil Fuels <laughs> as your president. Most of you are in the pockets of fossil fuel companies. What, do you, what are you guys going to do about that? Are you guys going to help fracking towns? I just fucking started watching Brockmire, and that's the, that is like one of the villains 
in the sh- other than just Brock Brockmire himself being a villain to himself, uh, because hey, self hatred. Uh, but uh, but the villain is a fossil fuel company, and I was like, that's awesome. F- fucking, that's great. Like, I'm so glad that that's happening in that show. Like in pop culture, we're starting to address that fracking companies are actually evil and the fucking lunacy of them saying that they're a mom and pop company. <laughs> like, you know, this family owned business. Yeah, you're a trillion dollar family owned business. I'm sure that's. Uh, how many families do you know that make that kind of fucking money? But there were no solutions offered here, you know, the which is which is what we were looking for. Right. That's the point of COP26. And it just uh, it, 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 all these conferences and we're going to see these conferences happen because the, the problems are becoming unignorable. The activists are becoming unignorable. Uh, corporate media has to start talking about this shit because things like free Assange and, you know, climate change and all of these fucking topics trend on Twitter. They become viral sensations. And so what do you do? You, you can't just ignore it. There's money to be made off of the viral sensation. So they have to talk about it, which I'm sure isn't great because the next ad is for fucking some fracking company or some, you know, Shell Oil or Exxon Mobil or some bullshit, you know, and you've just, it's just like, how long is that going to be sustainable? So, so you got to do these fucking platitude parties to, to get people to calm down. And then when people are calmed down, they can go back to peddling their propaganda bullshit. Instead of trying to cover real legitimate stories, which then they have to do more work uh, because that's that's harder propaganda. Like when people learn the truth, it's harder to propagandize them. When you get an educated populace, it's harder to propagandize them.